Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you all about purple coneflower. If you don't have any purple coneflower growing in your yard today, you should really consider adding it. I've been wanting to make this video for a while now. This is one of my favorite plants. It looks great for about half the growing season, and it is extremely reliable in bringing in the wildlife. Purple coneflower is one of the most popular uh, perennial flowers in the United States and really in the world. You probably notice it in your neighborhood, around town. I've actually seen it used as an ornamental in the United States and also in Europe when I've gone there a few times for work. It's popular for a good reason. It's a beautiful flower that really blooms a long time. It's tough, hardy, versatile, and it really attracts a ton of bees and butterflies. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about purple cone flower. We're gonna cover what is purple cone flower, why you should grow it, how to ID it, grow and care for it, how to germinate it from seed and save the seed, the wildlife that it can bring into your yard, some typical garden uses, and then we'll review. And one note I wanna to touch on too, Echinacea is used medicinally to treat colds and other ailments. It, like you can buy it as a herbal supplement. It's normally done by making a ticature of the root, but I'm not gonna be covering any of that. Perhaps in the future, I'll make a video for that. So check back in the description sometime down the road. Maybe I'll do some. But anyways, let's dive in and have a closer look. Okay, so what is purple cone flower? Well, scientifically, it's known as Echinacea purpurea. It's a herbaceous perennial that's native to Eastern North America. It starts blooming in the summer and can continue right up through frost if you deadhead it, um, which we'll talk about later. You'll naturally find it in roadsides, meadows, prairies, or open woods. I've even found it halfway up Old Rag Mountain in Shenandoah National Park. Why you should grow purple coneflower. The first reason is it's beautiful. Purple coneflower produces numerous pink, purple, daisy-like blooms that are really large. If you're looking for a flower to provide you with a lot of curb appeal or just accent your house, this is a really great one to have. The next reason is that purple coneflower can bloom for several months. If you deadhead it, you can keep it producing blooms right up until frost. There aren't too many perennials that can do that, and we'll talk about deadheading later in this video. The next reason is that pollinators love it. Purple coneflower brings in all sorts of pollinators. Lots of bees, butterflies, and even the occasional hummingbird will frequent it. This is a tough native plant. It's one of the easiest plants that you can grow in North America. It's great for beginners to grow. You just need to give it some sun and well-draining soil and it will thrive. And last, this is really easy to grow from seed. If you're new to growing plants, new to gardening, new to growing stuff from seed, this is a plant for you. You can have dozens and dozens of plants for just a $2 pack of seed. Purple cone flower is really easy to identify from when it emerges in the spring through the fall. So in optimum conditions, this plant will get four to five feet tall by three feet wide. So that's roughly one and a half meters by one meter when it's full grown. You wanna space the plants about three feet apart. That's the general recommendation. If you pack them in tighter, you'll have fewer weeds, but you'll also have higher risk of fungus. And it emerges really easy early in the spring as a small reddish shoot, like I'm showing you here. And it'll just poke through the soil or the mulch. So it's pretty, pretty easy and unique in that regard. The stalk of purple coneflower is light green to purple, and they're rough textured in that they're gonna be covered with small hairs. But these large stalks also make it uh, very good for a cut flower. So if you wanna put flowers in a vase, this is a good plant to grow. There'll be a cluster of leaves at the base, and the leaves of purple coneflower are lancelot or ovate in shape, so kind of like a spearhead or triangular shaped. The edges are going to be serrated, and they're usually dark green. Before blooming and during its first year of life, the main thing you're going to see is these clumps of leaves on the ground. That's all you're going to see. It'll look kind of like a small bush, 6 inches to 12 inches tall uh, and in diameter. The flower, purple cone flower, is very easy to identify. They're pink to purple, daisy-like, and very large. They're around three to four inches in diameter, and they'll last for several weeks. An individual bloom will go for two, three weeks. Like its cousin, Echinacea pallida, there's going to be a ring of pollen that moves diametrically uh, through the uh, disc as uh, it goes. So as the pollen gets collected and pollinated, new ones will open up. The central disc is very hard and spiny, and if you've ever touched one, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But both nectar and pollen are produced here, making it attractive to all kinds of bees and butterflies. The root of echinacea is fibrous, so it's very easy to divide this plant. Purple coneflower doesn't spread from roots. 
It's not going to send out shoots and runners everywhere, but it will self-seed a bit. And uh, if you guys are liking this video, give me a thumbs up here. Click the like button. It really does help me out. I'd really appreciate it. And also, before I forget, this entire video does exist as an article at our website, growbuilder.com. So if you're looking for a quick reference, you can go there to find it. I'll link to it below. But uh, let's go into growing conditions. So this plant will grow in a lot of different conditions, but the key thing is full sun and well-drained soil. The more sun this plant gets, the taller, fuller, and more blooms it's going to produce. But it can grow in areas that only get, you know, four hours of sun. It just won't get as big or as showy. For soil types, it can grow just about anywhere. If you got regular yard soil, not a problem. Hard clay, it'll do fine. The only thing that could be an issue is if it's too sandy, like a beach or something. You know, you don't see them there. But uh, it, it can grow just almost anywhere. For moisture, it's very drought tolerant. The optimum conditions would be dry to medium moisture or slightly moist. You don't want to grow this thing where water regularly collects, though. You don't find these in swamps, so it, it will drown the roots. All right, for general growing care, if you plant echinacea in the conditions that it likes, which is sun and well-drained soil, you probably won't have any problems with this flower. There are a few diseases that can affect it, and I will touch on those at the end. But the secret to growing large, healthy, and beautiful plants is to put them in the environments that they prefer. That's the main trick to having a green thumb. When it comes to dividing echinacea, you want to do this every three to five years. I have a detailed video step-by-step -step on how to do that, which I'll put a card in the top right and down below. But uh, you basically just dig it up and cut it in half. But I do have step-by-step -step instructions there for deadheading purple cone flower. So this is important if you want to keep the blooms going all summer into the fall. What you do is as soon as you see a flower starting to wilt and not look so nice, you just follow the stalk down to a junction of leaves and cut the stalk right above those junctions of leaves. That will encourage the plant to send up a new shoot with a new bloom. I've kept plants blooming right up into uh, like October, November doing this. Just note that deadheading will interfere with the seed production of a particular plant though. Okay, for growing purple coneflower from seed, it is very easy to do this. In the beginning I said it's a great perennial for someone who's new to gardening, and this is why. The seed doesn't require any special treatment. You just need to plant it 1 8 to a quarter inch deep, which is 3 to 6 millimeters, and keep it in moist soil, just regular potting soil. Keep it moist, but not wet. Put it somewhere that it gets morning sun and afternoon shade. Um, that's important because the morning sun and afternoon shade will help keep the soil moist, but still get warm temperatures. And you can do this in spring once the temperatures start warming up. It'll germinate usually around 70 Fahrenheit or so, and it happens within two or three weeks. So. On stratification, some people are going to tell you that coneflower needs it, and there are references that say that. And it's true that the other species of echinacea require stratification. Narrow leaf coneflower, Tennessee coneflower, pale purple coneflower, they all need 30 to 90 days. But echinacea purpurea, regular purple coneflower, does not. I have germinated hundreds of these seeds without stratifying anything. Stratification won't hurt, like, stratification won't hurt you at all but uh, you don't need to do it. And that's confirmed with university studies, which I reference in my article on growing this from seed, which will be down below. So if you want to see the studies, you can go there. But to prove it, I did do a little test uh, this past summer in 2020. I had some old seed that was at least two years old. It might have been three. And I planted 18 seeds in a six pack with no stratification and then an additional 18 seeds in another six pack after stratifying for one week in the refrigerator. The results were basically the same. After a couple of weeks, the seed with no stratification had six germination, while the ones with a week of stratification had eight. So although the stratified seeds grew more, if you actually did a two-proportion test on this, you'd find that there's really no statistical difference in the germination rate. And I'm just doing this to show you that you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Stratification will not hurt your germination rates, but it's not necessarily going to help you that much either. Speaking of seed, it's really easy to save echinacea seeds. I do have a detailed video and article on this subject, which I'll put cards in the top right and down below. But all you need to do is get some seed heads and shake them up in a plastic container. The shaking will jostle all the seed out of the head and you'll basically be able to just get a pile of seed and some chaff. Once it's fully dry, you can store it for a year or two in a plastic container or an envelope. So how fast is it to establish echinacea from seed? Well, if you started seed this year, you should expect blooms the second year. The first year, the plant's working hard to make the root mass, root stock, and you're mainly going to see those leaves, like a little cluster of leaves. That's all you're going to see the whole year. For wildlife, 
This plant is a favorite of bees and butterflies. I see lots and lots of bees on it. You even see bumblebees take naps on the flower. There's, it's really cool. There's not so many plants where you'll see a bumblebee just pass out for a few hours. If you're trying to attract bees and butterflies though, the more you plant, the more you're gonna attract. I would suggest you grow at least three of these to help bring in uh, more butterflies and such. Once seeds begin to form, you will attract birds to the seed heads. So this plant will act as a natural bird feeder to your yard. It's mainly gonna be finches but it's still pretty cool to see the seed head just kind of swaying around from a bird landing on it. Let's talk about deer and rabbits. I've found both will browse the foliage when it's young and rabbits will completely devour seedlings. So you want to protect these with a cage or liquid fence. Someday I'm gonna make a video about protecting plants with liquid fence. I will link down below when I do make it, but liquid fence does really work. And I'll link to liquid fence actually that I use down below as well. So there are a couple other diseases and pests that I need to talk about. The first one I wanna cover is something called Aster's Yellow. Aster's Yellow is caused by a phytoplasma that is transferred by the common leaf hopper insect. If your plant gets this, it's not gonna be good. The main symptom, symptom that you're gonna see is a flower that is green and never gets its color and it'll be very deformed. If it occurs, there is no known remedy. What you are supposed to do, per references, is remove the plant completely. Just dig it out and throw it in the garbage. Don't compost it. I've never had this disease on any of my plants in all the years I've been growing it, but just be aware of it and know what to look for. The next problem I got to talk about is mites. There is a mite that has not even been described yet, which can get inside the flower head and cause problems for echinacea. It'll get inside the flower head and start sucking the sap just like an aphid. The result of this is going to be like a deformed seed head and or deformed flower head that you can see here. When that happens, you just need to get rid of the problem flower heads. Just get them and throw them in the trash. Don't compost them. I have had this happen to me. It just affected a handful of blooms on a couple of plants. So just be aware of it. And then the last thing I want to talk about is leaf spot fungus. This is really only going to be a problem if your plants are packed really closely together. It's very humid and there's not much airflow. There's fungicides that you can use on this, or you can just space your plants far enough apart and you shouldn't have a problem. All right, let's jump into garden uses. So as you've seen from all the footage I've shown you, I use this plant in well manicured mulched flower beds. I use it in wildflower gardens, our backyard micro prairie. I use it everywhere. It's just very, very versatile. It grows in a huge variety of conditions, a huge variety of soil types. You can just use it everywhere. And with all these different uses, you can get an idea of how many different companion plants you can grow with it, as you've seen all of the ones I've been showing you. One other thing that I do need to talk about is all the different varieties of echinacea that are out there. You can buy red ones, white ones, orange ones, crazy color ones, and they can look really nice in a display. But I have to tell you that anytime you mess with the straight native species, you will affect how many pollinators visit it. There are studies that have documented this. Nativers, cultivars don't attract as many pollinators as the regular straight species that is its normal pink or purple color. I mean, I have actually encountered white ones in the wild and they do exist, but uh, it's better to go with the regular pink or purple if you're trying to attract wildlife. But uh, it's really an excellent flower. It's very easy to grow. So let's start reviewing. Purple cone flower, Echinacea purpurea, it'll grow three to five feet tall in full sun and well-drained soil, even in clay soil. It's very easy to grow from seed, even for a beginner, but the seedlings need to get protected from deer and rabbits. It's generally disease resistant and tough in a variety of conditions, but there are a few things that you need to keep an eye out for. They may never happen to you, or they might. Just know what they are and know what to look for. The versatility of this plant is really awesome. You can certainly find a spot in your garden for it. I'm sure you can. Plant more to get more butterflies and bees and enjoy. Now, finally, this entire video is an article at our website. We do have lots of other articles on plants at our website that we don't even have videos for. So you might find something interesting. So you should go have a look. Maybe you find something you like. But I really want to thank you guys all for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. This is one of my favorite plants. It's just so reliable at bringing in wildlife and it looks great too as well as having a few other uses. So click like if you enjoyed the video as it really helps our channel out. And I hope you guys have a good one. Any questions, ask them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Thanks.